What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video and we are taking a look at a Town Hall 10 based that took 6 attacks and defended successfully through it uh, in a practice war this weekend. Um, this base obviously is not what you would expect to be uh, dominating at Town Hall 10, but I think this video is going to kind of show you guys sometimes unorthodox bases. Um, just having the element of the attacker not being familiar, not being used to attacking a certain type of base can be better than kind of a cutting edge anti three star base that attackers are so used to seeing now. Um, so we're in, in this video, I am burning this base, I guess. It's my base, so I don't think I'm going to have to worry about people dropping angry comments because it's just me that uh, is being the victim here of the base burning. Uh, but I wanted to show it to you guys because I thought it was kind of funny how this base um, defended so many times. And it's done it in the past before. It's, it often holds at least one or two attacks uh, in wars against you know competitive uh, clans that are in war leagues and uh, are up there with some of the you know the best attackers. So... Let me go ahead and back out. We'll start at the beginning. Take a look at the attacks on it. Um, I think one of them was a, like a disconnect, so we should have like a solid five attacks or, show, or so that we'll be kind of scrolling through here in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, but I think this video can show you guys that, you know, even beyond Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, sometimes it's better, especially if you're going up against, a, you know, a tougher clan, uh, which has definitely been true for me competing in some of the... Town Hall uh, 12, you know, World Championship, and uh, just this weekend we had a uh, Town Hall 12 December tournament, uh, or I guess it's in November, I don't, I don't know, we were in a Town Hall 12 tournament uh, with some of the, you know, the best Town Hall 12 plans out there, and uh, I think it's important to have bases that aren't just, you know, well done in terms of having all the components of a solid uh, base in terms of protecting the queen, you know, stuff like that, keeping the, uh, the eagle protected, but also uh, having designs in your base that people aren't used to seeing. Now at Town Hall 10, um, which a side note, Town Hall 10 is kind of getting phased out, it looks like, of some of the, you know, the top war leagues, especially with Town Hall 13, so much speculation about it coming out, we could see a shift to like an 11, 12, and 13 uh, breakdown if 13 does come out. I haven't been keeping up uh, to date with all that, but... Um, Town Hall 10, I think, is still uh, semi-competitive and worth, you know, trying to build a good base. And one thing that's overlooked, I think, is that at Town Hall 10, you have the, uh, you, you don't have the Warden. So you're not going to get that value of going through a high damage area and protecting your troops for 5 to 10 seconds, whether you're Town Hall uh, 11 or Town Hall 12. So I think that um, Town Hall 10 is worth putting uh, a lot of damage in the core of your base because the attacker's not going to have the benefit of using the Warden over that. Um, and you can see right here we got, excuse me, uh, both Infernos, Teslas. We just got a ton of damage in the core of this base. And what that does is it makes those balloons just melt as they go through. There, were, there was a couple free spells, but it wasn't enough to keep up those balloons, especially with those Infernos. When you have both Infernos locked on uh, to balloons, they take them down pretty quickly uh, without any heal spells or anything. So I think that that's a good technique at Town Hall 10. Now, obviously, there's attacks like Falcon and you know spamming uh, Witches and stuff like that that can kind of... Uh, counter a base that has all the value uh, tucked into the core, all that damage, important buildings. But if, like in this base, you make it difficult to path all that into the core, uh, in, in this case we have a ring of like buildings so it's difficult to cut a funnel, uh, you can kind of counter some of those attacks that are meant uh, for, the, for that type of base. So let's move along here. Um, we're going to skip the one after this because it, I believe it was some kind of disconnect or I don't know, something that only got 24%. I guess I'll take a look at it, because a, a lot of these attacks I haven't even seen yet. Um, a busy day in uh, working uh, the tournament that we were in. Fortunately, didn't pan out too well for us. Um, but haven't gotten a chance to watch some of these attacks. So some of these are actually new to me, just watching them now. This was just kind of a double jump, trying to smash the base with P.E.K.K.A.s and Bowlers, which uh, I think is you know something that would typically be used against the base that has a core like this, where you have all that value just sitting there. Lava Hound, of course, is a good way to kind of hold up the queen uh, for a little while, but there's a bunch of wizards, get through that those pups. Um, 
it's just difficult to, to path everything through. And you can see the bowlers uh, kind of peel off there. So it's just the Pekka's in the core. Slammer's going to get a lot of value coming around the outside, uh, paired up with the Queen there. Uh, but the Infernos are still relatively well protected in uh, their little compartments there. That back end Inferno stayed up very long. Uh, so the King and the Pekka are going to peter out in the core. And then that Slammer is going to eventually go down. Uh, so we'll fast forward to the end here because those balloons won't make it through. Um, once again, the base uh, holds up pretty well. So uh, like I said, guys, um, when you're building a base, it's, you know, it can't just be absolute trash. Like this base... Um, it still has certain elements that make it difficult to attack um, in terms of the, the ring around without any compartments that allow for funneling into the core. There still are certain techniques. The traps are relatively well placed. Um, so don't want to make it look like you can just throw up any base and it will you know, defend well if people aren't used to seeing it. Um, but really, oftentimes people can overlook or underestimate a base and they're just not used to, to playing around with this type of dynamic of the DPS being concentrated. It's hard to estimate how troops will behave and how much damage they can take because they're not used to seeing them uh, in this circumstance. Now this one, uh, we'll just take a look at it. It only lasted 30 seconds. It looks like it was a disconnect. Um, it was going to be a kill squad hog attack, uh, which actually might not have been a bad idea, assuming the queen would have went down. It's hard to know without it being fully uh, executed. So let's keep moving on. Uh, we have three attacks left. This next one, um, very close, 96%, and crazy queen charge baby dragon attack. Uh, this one I haven't seen before, so it should be interesting. Go ahead and fast forward here. Um, by the way, guys, if you're... Fans of the podcast, the Clash of Clans ESL podcast, that is, uh, that we've had a couple episodes of now. You may be wondering, it's been, uh, I think, two weeks since we've had an episode. It's just been really busy, uh, and it's been difficult to get people uh, to commit to recording just because there's other Clash events going on right now. It's a busy time in competitive Clash of Clans. Uh, but things are going to wind down soon. We're looking at having some, uh, I'm not going to give too much detail, but people that were involved right up in the uh, Clash of Clans World Championship. So that should be very cool to see um, and get to hear some perspectives in that sense. So just kind of, you know, keep checking, make sure you're subscribed, uh, whether it's on iTunes, uh, Apple, iTunes slash Apple uh, Podcasts, or Google Play, or Google Music, I don't even know. I think it's Google Music and Spotify. Those are the three platforms we're on, uh, some of the, the big three. Uh, be sure to just kind of be subscribed, be checking, because um, we should be able to get some podcasts coming out soon for you guys. I'm trying to get back on that once a week thing, but, you know, real life happens, so do my best. Anyway, uh, this was an interesting attack, it looks like, because doing a pretty big queen charge, uh, had to eat through a couple rages there, and then here come these baby dragons, just looks like supporting the queen around the base, going to jump in with the queen there, rage her up again, uh, looks like... Queen paths in here and actually takes out the Inferno. So uh, it was possible that those healers would go down to the Inferno, but she actually comes in. Slammer come into the core and E drag. I mean, this was a really interesting attack, but the E drag, uh, I think, with you know the air defense frozen, looks like it's going to get some good value here. Queen does go down. There's still eight baby dragons. It's just that that air defense is really the only thing that's going to be able to stop these baby dragons. Um, so we'll see. We'll go times two here. Uh, looks like starts to take out kind of the perimeter of the base. Something to draw those healers across the base would have been nice, like a wizard, um, because that would have helped tank the air defense a little bit. Um, looks like that E-drag does get the air defense, but uh, things come to a halt right here. Uh, looks like ran out of time. So that was relatively close. Might have even tripled had he had another 10, 15 seconds. Um, but, you know, still holding up. And I think it's just because people aren't used to seeing this type of base, don't know exactly what to do on it. Uh, so what do we have left here? We took a look at the uh, 96 percenter. Uh, let's take a look at this next one uh, on the base, which was a queen charge Lalo. Looks like, um, and this base has been tripled before, I think mostly with some kind of Lalo variation. It's just a question of how much do you invest into your kill squad? Or do you do a queen charge? Do you do a Sui hero? People just don't know what to do um, because it's a relatively difficult core to take out with balloons alone. So it's how much, how do I cut this base off? Because um, really that's a lot of what current uh, 
meta is in, in Clash of Clans in general is phased attacks, kill squad, you know, using the heroes in a certain way, and then cutting out pathing and really having a, a pathing uh, plan for the, you know, defense targeting part of your attack, if it's balloons or hogs uh, or miners even. Really, this is a game of funneling. Everything comes down to funneling, so it's how do I make sure I have a good funnel and a good path cut out for my back-end troops, and in this case, this base makes it a little bit tricky because you're not sure kind of where to cut things off and how much you need to invest in order to make the back end successful. So it looks like the Lalos is going to kind of overlap with the Queen here. Um, once again, these Balloons are going to just kind of get eaten up by the Multi-Inferno and the combination of all this other damage. The Lava Hounds really can't tank that well uh, when there's just you know the short-range Teslas, Infernos, stuff that the Lava Hounds don't tank as effectively. So the Queen cuts in here, but um, not really a whole lot to support her. The Haste doesn't even reach those Balloons at first. Uh, so this one uh, obviously not going to work out, but the queen will uh, continue for a little while, it looks like, right here. Um, she might have even been able to take out the rest of this base had she had enough time, because uh, she would have got that expo next. But, you know, running out the clock is half the defense uh, in Clash of Clans, especially at Town Hall 10. Anyway, I think we have one more to take a look at, it looks like. Um, last attempt on this base, and it was a kill squad Lalo. We'll uh, go times two just... Uh, for sake of time, you guys have seen this base before a little bit. Feel free to copy it um, if you if you want. Uh, I guess you know maybe it'll throw off some attackers uh, that you face depending on what types of wars you're in. Um, but I'm not. I, I think the best way to attack this base is probably some kind of queen walk into either like a falcon or a kind of a ground smash. If you can just get the funnel cut. Maybe you queen walk it on one side because you can see you can reach a lot. Uh, you can reach two layers from the outside of the base and then maybe wall break the king in or something uh, to cut the funnel on the other side. But I think that's a, a relatively safe way to do it. Lalo's been tried a lot. It's worked a few times. It's also obviously not worked a few times as you can see in this video. Um, but really it's just about throwing people off. So I uh, hope this helped. Maybe inspired a few base ideas whether you're a Town Hall 10 or up. Um, but that's a good point for Town Hall 10, guys. Without the Warden, a damage-heavy core is the way to go if it's difficult to funnel into. Um, that's kind of the key there to prevent your, your base from getting smashed by a Falcon or some kind of, you know, Bow Witch, something along those lines. That will do it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Should have another one coming out uh, maybe in a couple days or so. So keep your, uh, your head up for that, and I'll see you next time. Bisectatron out.